Firstly, this video includes a little bit of spoilers, so spoiler warning. If you are going to watch The Batman starring Robert Pattinson as The Batman and it's directed by Matt Reeves, it's better if you make time to listen to the prequel novel since it reveals tons about the character arcs, timeline history and current setting. As the film opens up with the Riddler spying on his would-be victim, Matt Reeves ensures in every possible way this is a detective thriller and not everyday superhero bust in and do superhero stuff movie. Yes, it does have heavy fight scenes. It's a comic book character after all, but they are very grounded. Every major character arc is well written. In fact, the story makes sure that we empathize, but we don't accept the Riddler's sick intentions. As I was really scared since DC is about to pull the Joker card yet again, I enjoyed the fact that Batman isn't ready about everything. He is learning, but in a painful way. He fails to understand the situation in certain times. Trust issues makes him feel divided. Is he the vengeance or the Batman? Major credits goes to Matt Reeves for making the entire film visually amazing. The score grows with rising plot tension. The color shifts from cool tone noir to warm tones. And yes, Kurt's vocal lines plays when Bruce feels sad for the orphans of the people in need. The film is really perfect since this version of Batman is someone I can resonate with mentally. There are moments in the film where the small mobs and other villains are traumatized by Batman's presence, while at other moments, Bruce is traumatized by himself. His anger and his sense of doing justice seems to be devouring him. We see him taking risks, which gets him out of immediate danger, but does not pay off well in the long run, as we see a little naive side of Batman. As we are witnessing Bruce donning the cape for his second year, the similarities between Batman and the Riddler is showcased beautifully, as both of them stalk their offenders or victims, planning and going that extra level to make sure they achieve success in their respective tasks. While Robert Pattinson slays the role of playing both Batman and Bruce Wayne, credit needs to be awarded to Paul Dino's Riddler for excellently showcasing to the audience that Riddler isn't a C-tier villain. I also love the fact how they balance Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman. The character felt like a strong anti-hero with a backstory all mingling well with the entire plotline. Although there isn't technically a post-credit scene, yet the film ends with a tease for the next villain who is going to make a comeback since Gotham loves a comeback story. Although the person casually drops the idea of the infamous clown prince of Gotham being part of the timeline, we might not get to see him in the sequel film right away. Overall, it's a film you won't want to miss out on. Therefore, if you get a chance to watch The Batman, rush to your nearest theatres before it gets spammed on Twitter and Reddit.